Hey, what's up guys? It's Yvonne here at YvonneManna.com. And in this video, I want to show you how to set up conversion tracking for Microsoft or Bing ads in 2023. Conversion tracking is incredibly important. I can't stress it enough. Just like you cannot hit a target that you can't see, you also can't optimize and improve your campaigns that you don't track. So it is super, super imperative that you guys track your campaigns. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Before we get straight into it, guys, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell icon so you get notified when I release more videos like this showing you the different tools, tips, tricks, and techniques for making money online. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So we have our Microsoft Ads account right over here, and we're going to be using this landing page as an example. And this thank you page is an example to track and to set up tracking. So let's suppose we want to track how many people sign up for the guide. So they're going to sign up. They're going to enter their, in this case, just the name. And then they're going to show up here. Okay. This is just for illustration purposes. And that's what we want to track. So I am using Unbounce here for this example. You can use whatever you like. The, the point and the idea will be the same. I do suggest Unbounce though. I have been using these guys for about four or five years now to create my landing pages. Absolutely love the system. I haven't been able to come across a downside with these guys yet. They're so flexible, so easy to use everything, customizable, and their support is great. So if you guys want to check it out as well, just head over to go.evonmana.com slash unbounce, and I give you a 14-day free trial and a 20% discount on your first three months. So really an exclusive offer you can't get anywhere else. That said, let me show you how to set up the tracking. So in Microsoft Ads, what we're going to do is head over into Tools. We're going to click on conversion goals over here. And then we have a bunch of conversions here. Don't worry about these. So you're just going to click on create new. We're going to start from scratch. And I assume you guys do have some sort of website. So we're going to click on a website over here and we're going to click next for the conversion goal. So you would set what it is that you want to track. So in our case, it's going to be a lead, right? So oops, we're going to come back here. We're going to say submit lead or sign up. Any of these are fine. Doesn't really matter, but if you want to track purchases, then you would select purchase. So do whatever it is, whatever the definition of your conversion is, this is what you would enter. So here we'll say, let's say sign up. And then we want to say destination URL. And what we're going to do is we're going to enter this URL. We're going to tell Microsoft, hey, we want to track this URL. Whoever lands on this URL, and the only way they can land here is if they sign up, we want that to be considered as a conversion, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Destination URL. We're going to click next. We're going to give it a name. So let's say, let's say signups to Yvonne Mana free guide. Let's say this is the name, right? So we can keep track of our conversions and then destination URL. We want to say contains, and then we're going to go in and we're going to take, we're going to copy this URL. We're going to come back. We're going to paste it here. And let's make sure we remove the HTTP. So as long as the URL bar will contain these letters in this order, AKA this URL, it will be considered a conversion. So if anybody lands on this URL, which is the thank you page, it's going to be considered a conversion. So in your case, if you want to track purchases, for example, you would add your order form confirmation page, the thank you sales page over here. And that's how you would be able to track how many people buy. All right. And then revenue, you can select, you can say, hey, each sale is worth $5 for me. In our case, we're collecting leads, so there's no immediate sales value, especially if we're just starting out. However, if you are more experienced and you do have some data to go off of, you can count how many average leads does it take for you to get a sale and then divide that sale amount by the leads that you've received. And that way you can add your average dollar amount for every lead over here. So we're going to go with don't assign a value. Let's suppose we're starting from the beginning. We have no idea how much each lead is worth. The main thing is we want to be able to see the conversion numbers. So we want to see we got one conversion. We got two conversions, right? That's the main thing we want to see to start off with. So everything else is kind of you. You can leave as default, but I can quickly go through it. So scope basically shows on which account do you want this conversion tracking to apply to. For count, you can say, do you want to count every single purchase? So let's say over here, it literally tells you if one ad results in three sales, do you want that to be considered as three conversions? 
I usually like to go with unique because I like to count how many people bought as opposed to how many things were bought. However, if you are selling items, you would probably want to go with all because if you have upsells and downsells, you want to count the monetary value. So I would suggest going with this. But if you're just tracking things like leads that don't really have a monetary value, I would go with unique over here. Conversion window, this just says that how long do you want it to take before conversion will not be considered as a conversion after a click? So if somebody clicks on your ad and they buy 31 days later, that will not be considered a conversion. If somebody clicks on your ad and buys 29 days later, that will be considered a conversion. So you can set the maximum of 90 days. I think 30 days is good to have. It keeps things relevant because if you set something as high as 90 days, somebody might have purchased your ad, let's say 89 days later, and that will be considered a conversion. But how much of an effect did your ad actually have on somebody if they bought three months later, right? Does that make sense? So these are things you have to keep in mind and it will vary greatly depending on your niche. So if you're selling houses, if you're selling cars, you know, these are big purchases that take a lot of time for people to think about. So in that case, definitely I'd go with 90 days. But if you're selling something like a pencil, what are the chances that somebody sees your ad and then buys a pencil three months later because of your ad, you know? very small chance because it's such a small purchase. So this will depend on your specific niche and your field, but that's what that is. View through conversion window is the same as this. The only difference is it's people seeing your ad before they make a purchase as opposed to people clicking on your ad. So how many days or hours or minutes do you wanna give somebody before a conversion is not counted after they view your ad? So somebody views your ad and then they buy two days later, do you want that to be considered a conversion? So that's what you would put here. And then including conversions, by the way, for any of these, if my explanation doesn't make sense or you need a reminder, refresher, you can click on these little question marks and they should explain to you what that is. So uh, this option here, you generally do wanna select it at on. You would generally deselect it if let's say you have a bunch of different conversions you're tracking, let's say an upsell, a downsell, a lead generation, all that. Because when I show you after, when you go into the conversions column, in your actual campaigns, you want only the most relevant conversions to show up. So that will be, for example, a purchase. A purchase is what truly matters, right? At the end of the day, you're trying to make money. You're not trying to count how many people sign up to your guide for the sake of it. You're trying to make money. So when you have so many different conversions set up, you will probably want to deselect the least relevant ones because you will want Microsoft to focus on the most important conversions, which is sales. In this case, we only have one conversion. We have the sign up, so we can leave it on because that's the only conversion we're tracking. But that's what this is, the including conversions option here. So we're gonna go to next. So if you don't have the UET tag enabled, which I'm assuming you don't, we are going to go with this option over here. Now the UET tag is gonna be incredibly helpful for remarketing as well. So it's definitely very good that we're gonna be setting it up here because then this will also work for remarketing. So we're gonna go with this option, which is gonna be the simplest, assuming nobody has the tag installed, we're gonna click on save and next. And then you have all these different options. You can send the tag to a developer, you can click next and you will be able to specify their email. You can add the tag through a website editing platform. So they have certain integrations with WordPress, Wix, Shopify, or BigCommerce. They're going to give you instructions and you'll be able to very easily set it up. Or you can do it through Google Tag Manager where Microsoft says they're going to do it themselves. So you will just have to sign in to your Google Tag Manager account and Microsoft will take it from there. So it's going to be really simple. So all of these are very simple. Obviously, that will beat the whole point of the video. So I'm going to go with the hardest route here, install the tag yourself so that I can show you how to actually set it up. We're gonna click on next. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this tag and paste it in between the head tags of every page on your website. Now in our case, we only wanna track how many people land here, right? So technically we only have to add this conversion tracking tag to our thank you page. That's all we have to add it to. We don't have to add it to the landing page, but I do suggest that you add this UET tag on every single page of your site because later on, if you decide to do remarketing, if you decide to set up maybe a different conversion, you will be able to do so. So I strongly suggest that you add this code on every single page of your site, even though you don't technically have to in our specific case. So we're going to click on copy tag. It's gonna say tag copied. We're going to go back to our unbounce. We're gonna to go to our, let's go to our thank you page. Well, actually we could use both. So let me open them in two different tabs. So let's say the thank you page first, we're gonna come in here. 
We're going to click on JavaScript. We're going to click on add new JavaScript. We're going to paste the code right here. We're going to name it, let's say Microsoft ads UET tag, and we're going to put it in the head section as it says. So they're telling us put it in the head section of every page of your site. And it's going to be in the head title code. And we're going to click done. Now, obviously, not all of you guys are going to have unbounce, even though I strongly suggest it for landing page building. So regardless of what other page builder you're using, the process is the same. You are looking for this JavaScript option. So if you're using ClickFunnels, that option is going to be somewhere in the top left. Lead pages, about the same. I think it's the top left. If you're using WordPress, you can install a plugin called headers and footers. And you'll be able to add this code, the same code into the header section of the page. So the main thing is you want to add it into the JavaScript spot of your site. And if you're not sure, you can always contact support and just ask them. You can say, hey, I want to add this Microsoft ads conversion code to my page. Where can I add it? Where is the JavaScript part of my website builder? So you can always ask support because there's I'm sure there's hundreds of different website builders that you or I have not heard about. So that would be the process for setting it up. You're looking for this JavaScript portion where you can add the code, all right? Now, after you're done that, you can click Save, you can click Republish, and it's gonna be publishing. Let's go to this landing page now. We're gonna click Edit again, and we're going to add the code here. JavaScript, add new JavaScript. We're gonna paste the code here. We're gonna name it, let's say Microsoft Ads, UET tag. We're gonna say head, we're gonna say done. We're going to save, we're going to republish. And that should be good to go. So we can come back here, we can say next, and it is all done. So it's going to take up to 24 hours to verify the UET tags. And then they're telling you in the meantime, you can set up the UET tag helper, which is this great extension over here. So type that into Google search and you should be able to get that as an extension. And what you'll be able to do here, so this is our landing page, we can refresh the page we can check over here. So this is the tag. We can go over here, we can say on. We can refresh the page again. And now as you can see, it's got a little green to it, which means that a tag has been set up successfully. This tag number right here, 4358 should match this tag here. So if we click done, and we look for our tag, which one was it? Sign up to Yvonne Mana Free Guide, I think. Yeah, this is the one, 4358. This was the one that we just did right here. And this is the matching number, okay? So it matches, so the tag is set up correctly. But let's check our main page. This is the main page we wanna track it on. So we're going to first turn it on, then we're going to refresh the page, and we see the green there right off the bat, and boom, it's the same tag. So we know we set it up successfully, all right? So that is it for conversion tracking setup. So let me quickly show you where you would actually see it and what the columns would look like. So over here, we already added it to our columns, conversions. So if you go into columns, you go into modify columns, if you go into conversions, you will see the conversions right here. They're added, okay? Here it is. And then you can always remove it or you can move it up a little bit if you want, okay? But this is where you'll be able to read the conversions. And then you can add all these things too, conversion rate. You can add the cost per action. How much are you paying for every conversion, you know? And then here's the difference between the columns, by the way. So you have your basic conversions and then you have all conversions. So all conversions is gonna be all the conversions that you set up basic conversions are going to be the most important conversions that you want Microsoft ads to prioritize and to optimize for. All right. So like I said, if you have a lead conversion set up, if you have a purchase conversion and upsell, you probably don't want Microsoft to optimize for leads. You want them to optimize for sales because that's the, that's the end result, right? So that's the difference between all conversions and conversions. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys found value and you know how to set up tracking. If you enjoyed this content, definitely take a look at my website at ivanmana.com where I offer you guys a free 55 page affiliate marketing guide showing you how to get started and how to start potentially making money with affiliate marketing today. I also offer training courses, including a long Microsoft ads course, about five hours long, showing you everything you need to know about Microsoft ads and how to create campaigns, how to manage them, so on and so forth. So that is all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one.